This is Rico Brouwer from the Netherlands talking to pirates about the upcoming European parliamentary elections. And this time I'm with a member of parliament pirate, Julia Reda, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, yeah, in not too long from now, uh, pirates are going to continue your work, so to speak. So let's look back on the last couple of years of you in Parliament and look forward to on, yeah, on, on the European Union as you see it, and especially on those candidates that are now starting their campaigns. Yes, uh, absolutely. So do you want me to just uh, get right into it? Or? Well, the, the, to start, one of the th main topics that you've been working on for years, and that is reached the... Uh, yeah, well, we voted on the Article 13, now 17 of the Copyright Directive, any new developments on that area? Well, so uh, the European Parliament unfortunately adopted the copyright deal without changes on the 26th of March. It was an extremely close vote. So uh, on the question whether or not to allow amendments that would have allowed us to uh, delete the most problematic articles, there was just a majority of five votes um, to keep the text as it is. And the final vote on the overall package we lost by about 75 votes. So really, it was not that clear. It was a lot closer than the previous vote in September. And I think the uh, street protests, the intense um, discussion about the topic on the Internet played a huge role. But in the end, we just ran out of time and we did not have enough time to get the, the information out there. So. Uh, we lost the vote in the parliament and now the only thing that's standing in the way of uh, the directive being adopted is the vote in council, which is happening in the Agriculture Council on 15th of April. And there um, the directive will be adopted if there is a qualified majority for it. And um, right now it looks like there probably will be even though, for example, the Netherlands uh, have already announced that they will vote against. Yeah, in Sweden, I heard. Yeah, so Sweden is kind of an interesting case because Sweden used to be against the proposal, but then actually voted in favor of it uh, in the Coreper meeting, which gave the green light uh, to the vote in the European Parliament. And this was kind of surprising because the Swedish government parties uh, had always voted against in Parliament, but um, the Swedish government changed its position at the last minute, probably because of the Swedish Social Democrats, uh, who were internally divided, and in the end, in the European Parliament, some of the Swedish Social Democrats voted in favor and some voted against. Yeah. So it's probably the Social Democrats, who are the largest party in the Swedish uh, government, who led uh, Sweden to suddenly support the deal. But uh, politicians back home didn't like that. So they have announced a vote uh, by the European Affairs Committee in the Swedish parliament that is happening this week on Thursday and Friday. Okay. And uh, judging from what the different parties have said, including the Greens and the Liberals who support the government, uh, there will be a clear majority against the proposal. And the Swedish government is expected to follow the decision by the Swedish parliament to vote against. Okay. But on the whole, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait until the 15th, see what happens. Now, yeah, so I think uh, the fact that Sweden wants to vote against is a good sign yeah. because it shows that position can still change. And um, uh, some politicians have said, oh, it's over. We cannot change our position anymore, etc. Uh, especially in Germany, it's kind of uh, crazy because uh, our well, coalition government is made up of the conservatives and the social democrats. And the social democrats not only voted against in the European Parliament, uh, the justice minister who is responsible for copyright even publicly called upon people not to support the deal. So uh, clearly she, she took a public stance against it. But then um, she said that she would support it in the government anyway, provided that uh, Germany can make a, a statement, a so-called protocol notice that would clarify how they would implement it and that they would try to avoid upload filters, etc. This kind of statement wouldn't even be legally binding. But uh, absurdly enough, 
the conservatives said no to that. So the conservatives are not even willing to accept this protocol notice. And now the question is, what are the social democrats going to do? Because uh, Chancellor Merkel has already said Germany will vote in favor. But if the coalition partner doesn't agree, it can actually force the German government to abstain. And if they abstain, there would not be a qualified majority. So it really depends now whether the German social democrats are uh, going to stand up for what they believe yeah. in or whether they're just going to give in to Angela Merkel. And it's going to continue to the very last day. Who would have thought that? Pretty <laughs> much, yeah. I mean, I don't have very high hopes uh, for the Social Democrats in this question, but they have lost a lot of credibility because of this. Because yeah. generally, you know, they were relatively popular with young people. Also, the fact that they voted against in Parliament gave them a lot of sympathy. But if at the end of the day, uh, they're just going to go along with what Merkel says. I think it's really going to hurt them in the European elections. So I I hope they're going to think about it yeah. very seriously. So if you look back on, uh, on the last five years um, with regulations like this, but also on the positive side, maybe uh, what you did with FOSA and uh, what we have is the GDPR. Do you see the European Union better off today than it was when you started five years ago? Hmm. It's a very difficult question because I think on the one hand, on uh, in terms of legislation, there have been a lot of positive steps. So the ones you mentioned, but also, for example, next week we will be voting on a directive on whistleblower protection, which I think is extremely important so that people like uh, Antoine Deltour or Edward Snowden would not be able to be sued in Europe simply for telling the truth and for informing the public about really important um, uh, cases of corruption, tax avoidance, etc. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge success that the Pirates and the Greens really fought for uh, over the last five years, and I'm really happy to see that coming into effect. But at the same time, with Brexit, with the financial crisis and the um, reactions to that, the austerity measures on Greece, um, you can't really honestly say that the EU is in a better state than it was five years ago. Like a lot of things have been developing in a, in a negative direction, also with uh, far right parties gaining popularity. Um, and of course, there has also been uh, internet legislation that is really worrying that sometimes is uh, due to intense lobbying from the entertainment industry, like in the copyright file, or sometimes simply a product of fear. Like we have this terrorism regulation on the table at the moment that is uh, really putting draconian obligations on anyone who runs a website. And I think it's just a knee-jerk reaction to terrorist attacks and the way that they have been uh, popularized on the internet um, that is kind of leading a free society to restrict our own freedoms in a way that I find really worrying. Yeah. So it's a very mixed picture. Yeah, indeed. And also, oh, hearing you talk like this and you're so into those those files and, and, and everything that took place last five years, now we have a new set of pirates coming in that have to... Oh, get used to Brussels, Strasbourg, yeah. and all all those uh, stuff that you learned. Are you gonna are you gonna train them up a bit or what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm trying to support them as much as I can. Uh, I'm in really close contact with uh, the Czech pirates who are currently on track to get uh, probably at least four members of the European Parliament elected, which is a really uh, great improvement. I mean, last time they only missed uh, entering into parliament by uh, a few thousand votes. So it was really close last time. And I'm glad to see that they're really interested in, you know, core pirate, to pirate topics. Like uh, the two lead candidates have a really strong kind of fundamental rights angle with uh, one of them being a free software developer and coming from this whole free culture. Uh, struggle and the other one focusing strongly on, on issues around weapons exports and fundamental rights in our foreign, foreign policy. And I think this is all extremely important. Um, I'm also in good contact with uh, the German lead candidate, Patrick Breyer, who uh, is a well-known data protection and uh, transparency activist. And um, there are also some kind of coalitions, like, for example, in Slovenia, the Pirate Party is supporting a coalition together with kind of green activists that uh, I think together are really 
uh, forming an interesting new part uh, to the party system there. And I think they have pretty good chances as well. And my team and I are trying to keep them informed about what's going on in Brussels and also what they can expect uh, if they do get elected. Yeah. All right. Now, well, I've invited Patrick. So I want I want him in his ear as well and, and, and sh sh yeah, show the, the Germany and the, and the other countries, pirates in the other countries, who's running in, in Germany and what, what their agenda is. Same for all the other countries. And we've talked to Marketa already from Czech Republic yeah. and uh, Mop from uh, from Sweden. So right. there's a bunch of countries running with pirates uh, in these elections. Uh, we'll try to do interview uh, interviews with them. What would you say to the people on those lists, on those electoral lists, and those people just now starting the campaigns? Um, I think that for a party like the Pirate Party, the European Parliament is probably the most important parliament because uh, when national parliaments do legislation on digital issues, more often than not, it's an implementation of EU legislation. And even though we lost the vote on the copyright uh, directive in the end, we did manage to make a lot of improvements compared uh, to the original draft. Um, and uh, we were also able to create a public discussion about it while it is being discussed at European level. And this is, I think, really what the pirates need to do to get a European public uh, debate on Internet issues, because the European Parliament is really where the decisions are going to be made. And I hope that... Uh, um, there are going to be a lot of European pirates elected that can carry on this work. Yeah. So they're really going to make you work till your last day there? <laughs> with the, with the <laughs> More or less. I mean, less. things are going to wind down here after the end of next week when the parliament goes into recess. Yeah, uh, but true. until then, it's really going to be uh, extremely stressful. And we still have the vote on the terrorism regulation ahead next week. Uh, that's going to be a really important vote because in the committee we have managed to delete uh, mandatory upload filters for terrorism. So this is a great success. But there is a danger that the conservatives will try to put it back in yeah. in the par uh, parliament vote. But at the same time, there is still this rule in the proposal that we weren't able to eliminate at committee level that a platform has to delete terrorist content after a removal order within one hour which is extremely difficult for small websites to yeah. do. And we have to get rid of that in the parliament vote. So we still have a lot to do for next week. We still have the copyright vote coming up in council. And hopefully after that, uh, I'll be able to go on holiday. But uh, until the parliament uh, has, has gone into recess, I'll still be doing 150 uh, percent. So that was my lead up to the question indeed. So what are your plans when, when work is done? Right. So I've decided that uh, I miss a bit the academic discussion around Internet issues. And so I will uh, start a PhD at the MIT Media Lab in September, also around kind of Internet and free knowledge uh, issues. So I'll definitely stay part of those discussions. But I don't want to become a career politician where basically I become dependent on being reelected. So that's what I have planned for the next months. Ah, uh, yeah. And then up, up until September, you're in for a, 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 a well-deserved vacation. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Any last thoughts? What would you like to say to all people, uh, people and pirates watching in the European Union? Well, it's extremely important to go to vote in the European elections, especially young people uh, do not participate in the European elections that much. And I think it's really important that we have kind of a generational change and that people go to vote on the 23rd to 26th of May. Julia, thanks for all your work and, and also the professionalism that you've shown over the last five years. M best of luck in what you're going to do. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. <laughs>